mind. Concluding his prayer, he wrote down the words and then the, the five stanzas followed in the quick succession. He soon composed a suitable tune and believed that this song was God's answer to his prayer for the young singer. In the evening, Kirkpatrick handed the manuscript to the singer who rendered it with his customary favor and interpretation. But the song reached his heart as well as his mind and voice and caused him to surrender his life to God. What do you say? You know, when we are singing some songs, we need to know the background of those songs. So allow me to sing uh, number one and the chorus. Number one, Lillian, you can just uh, assist me and, uh, and Njoro. Uh, assist me in this. Uh, so today you must be active because I'm looking at you. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I tried. Lord, I'm coming.
Master, speak to our hearts. We have wandered far away from home. And this day you have come to remind us of many things that you have done unto us. And especially your death on the cross. As we proceed with this service, Lord, I will still invite your presence to abide with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We read our key text from the book of Genesis, chapter 40, verse 14. And the Bible says, But when all goes well for you, remember that I was with you. Please show kindness to me by mentioning my name to the Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. Many people are suffering and many were suffering with you. And at this time, God has shown a hand of favor in your life. Do you still remember some people who made you what you are? There are some people who dedicated and sacrificed their lives for you. There are some people who have made you what you are today. And some are still alive. Do you still remember them? Do you still pray for them? The root of remember is to keep in mind, to be mindful. It has the sense of being concerned about. The Oxford English Dictionary gives the divination of remember as to retain in or recall to or the memory or to bear in mind or to recollect. Remember also means to think or to think of or to recall the memory of something with some kind of feeling or intention. Remember can also mean to have in mind of. Above all, remember can mean to commemorate or to preserve in memory. Remember is mostly used as a covenant between God and man. The word remember is used 352 times in the Bible when you are using King James Version. That means the word remember is used everywhere in the Bible. Let me take you to the book of Genesis chapter 40. As we read from verse 1, the Bible says, It came to pass after these things, that the butler, the butler here is used as a cup bearer in some versions that you have. So uh, it came to pass after these things that the, the butler or the cup bearer and the baker of the, of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of e Egypt, that's Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was angry with these two officers, the chief butler, that is the, 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 the chief butler and the chief baker. So the butler is having the cup, is the cup bearer, and, uh, and the baker is baking bread. So the, 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 the pharaoh disagreed with them over some issues that are not mentioned in the Bible. So he put them in prison or in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison. So the place where Joseph was confined, you remember Joseph was falsely accused that uh, he slept with Potiphar's wife, uh, but he didn't do so, and that's why he's in prison. So the two, that is the butler and, uh, and uh,
thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, our technicians. So we are told that uh, uh, Pharaoh was angry with these two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain uh, of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and they, and they served them so they were in custody for a while. Then the butler and the, and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison had a dream. And remember, uh, Joseph was called a dreamer by his brothers and the same thing has come to prison and the same thing is going to come to Pharaoh. So they had a dream and these were not common dreams. These dreams were set and designed by our master. There are some things that happen to our lives and these things are not coming from any human being. These things are not coming from any other force, but these things are coming from heaven. God can plant a dream in your life for his glory so that somebody else will interpret your dream. So it happened. So the Bible tells us that uh, uh, these guys who are disturbed, they could not understand uh, the meaning of the dream. And then the Bible tells us that uh, uh, then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison had a dream, both of them, each man's dream in one night. And uh, each man's dream with its own interpretation. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. So he asked the Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house saying, why do you look so sad today? By the way, when we come to the house of the Lord, you can notice that there are some of us who are not the way they are used to be. Don't assume when you see somebody is sad, somebody is heartbroken, when you see somebody who, is, who has been uh, outgoing, but this day you see that he's somehow uh, settled and he cannot talk, he's just by himself or herself. It is our duty as Josephs of today to ask them, what is this that is making you sad, my sister, my brother? And they said, verse number 8, they said to Joseph, we each have had a dream and uh, there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, do not, do not interpretation belong to God? Tell them to me, please. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, behold, in my dream, a vine was before me and in the vine were three branches. It was through it. Uh, budded, uh, its blossoms shot forth and its clusters brought forth a ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in, in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in the Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Uh, now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head uh, they restore you to your, to your place or to your hobbies and you will put Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner uh, when you were his butler. Then Joseph didn't stop there. He said this in verse 14, which is very important for us to note and it was our key text. But remember, remember me when it is well with you. And please, Show kindness to me. Make mention of my name to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews and also I have done nothing here that they should put me into a prison or in dungeon. Verse number 16. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to, the, to, to Joseph, I also was in a dream. And there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh. And the birds ate them out of the basket on my hand. So Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. 
the three baskets are three days remember all of them are having three days three days both uh huh representing god the father the son and the holy spirit when you go symbolic then uh, uh he says these are the interpretations the three baskets are uh in the upper basket okay let me go to verse 16 again when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good he said to joseph i also uh, was in a dream and there were three white baskets on my head in the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for pharaoh and the birds ate them out of the basket on my hand on my head Uh, so joseph answered and said these are the interpretation of it the three uh, baskets are three uh, days within three days pharaoh will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree and the birds will eat your flesh from you now if you were the second one what could you have done you are told that in three days you are going to die pharaoh is going to kill you okay so this is your interpretation if you were joseph during that time you could have said no uh, after receiving the revelation of this interpretation maybe you could have changed your mind and say no i think for your case i i, I don't think i understand your dream <laughs> but then here uh, joseph revealed everything because it was not his it was from god that in 3 days my brother uh, pharaoh is going to kill you you will not live any longer and then uh, the bible says this Now it came to pass on the third day which was Pharaoh's birthday that he made a visit for all his servants and he lifted up the head of the of the chief butler and uh, of the chief baker among his servants and then he restored the chief butler that's the cup bearer to his uh, battleship uh, again and he, pier- he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted them yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph but forgot about him mark that line line number 14 line number 23 Joseph is telling the 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 the, the chief baker i mean the the chief butler that remember me when you have been lifted up when your life is spared and you are restored in that office kindly remember me but then number 23 tells us that the chief butler did not remember joseph but forgot all about him and because he forgot all about joseph god never did the same human beings may forget all that you have done to them you may do good things to many people in this world on earth under the sun these people may forget all about you in 2 years or even forever but god will always remember you hallelujah can you tell your neighbor that these people may forget about you but god will never Now listen to what is happening to chapter 41 verse number 1 and then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream and behold he stood by the river suddenly there came up out of the river seven cows fine looking and fat and fed in the midst of then behold seven other cows came after them out of the river hugly and gout and stood by the others the other cows on the bank of the river number 4 and the hugly and the gout cows ate up the seven fine looking and fat cows so pharaoh awoke he slept and dreamed a second time and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on the stalk plump plumby and good and then behold seven tiny heads plighted by the east wind sprang up after them and the seven tiny heads devoured the seven plumby and the full heads so pharaoh awoke 
is waking up for the second time and indeed it was a dream now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men and the pharaoh told them his dreams but there was no one who could interpret them for pharaoh the same thing that happened to Daniel it is also happening in the house of the pharaoh under the watch of Joseph number 9 then the chief butler now listen to that remember verse 14 chapter 40 verse 23 Chapter 40, now we are 41. It is now verse number 9. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man, this is Joseph, with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him and interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass just as he interpreted for us. So it happened. He restored me to my office and he hanged him. After the flood, okay, thank you so much. So now listen to this. <laughs> we are told of the story of Joseph. Joseph is in custody. We have the cup bearer also in custody. And the baker, the chief baker is also in custody. So what is the meaning or the symbol of the cup bearer? A cup usually carries a liquid kind of substance. And this is symbolic of the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we are talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, we are talking about the life that we have and that Christ gave unto us. So the cup bearer was carrying the life of Pharaoh and the life of the people of Egypt. So the man survived just because he was carrying their lives. But then the baker was dealing with bread. And bread is symbolic. It represents the body of Christ. And this is the body that was crucified on the cross. Are, you, are we together? So when we are talking about this chapter, chapter 40... And 41, we are within the Holy Communion and we are there to remember what happened in the, in the Old Testament. And uh, we have seen that this is the time when we see the Holy Communion in symbolic manner. So the cup bearer forgot about Joseph. Joseph is a replica of our master our savior. In most of our times, God has done many things in our lives. And the more God does, the more we forget about, the more we forget about him. God has done many things. There is this chorus, uh, Lillian. He has done so, dun, 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 and I cannot tell it all. Can you sing? You come this side so that they can see you. Uh -huh. Come, 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 come. If you know the chorus, let's sing this chorus. Uh -huh. And Joro just relax if you don't know. You can give us a pack up. He has done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. He has done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He cannot tell it all. I cannot tell. He has done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He has done 
maajabu na misiwezi kueleza yote siwezi kueleza siwezi kueleza ametenda maajabu na misiwezi kueleza ametenda maajabu thank you so much Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. I'm just going through some verses that reminds us of these words or the word remember. Exodus 20 verse 8 uses the word remember. And when you are told to remember, it means that some of us may develop a tendency of forgetting or assuming or ignoring six days you labor and do all your works but on the seventh day the sabbath of the lord do not do any other work i'm just paraphrasing but then you find that this afternoon hello this afternoon just immediately after this someone some of us are going to ignore or forget all about the sabbath we are going back to our usual places and we are going to some of us are going to watch football european league is going on hallelujah some of us are going to afro cinema continue shortly we are going to the tv some of us are going to wash utensils Uh-huh. Some of us are going to visit some people before time. We are going for visitation at 4. Hallelujah. <laughs> Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. It is only 12 hours. God has given you the whole week. God has given you the whole of 6 days. and he's telling you to remember only one day and this is the sabbath of the lord is not mine is not yours it is for him and he's telling you remember the sabbath and keep it holy and then one of my friend uh, asked me uh, pastor you know my sabbath can be on monday it can be on tuesday it can be on on wednesday uh, so I can just keep the Sabbath any day. And then I answered him and told him, "No, you cannot keep the Sabbath any day. The Bible is very clear. When you look at the book of Luke 23 verse 54, Good News version says, "It was Friday and the Sabbath was about to do what? To begin." So, the Sabbath is on Saturday, not Sunday, not Friday, not another day. And when you look at the same book chapter 24 look 24 verse 1 it says verily on sunday morning and when you read from king james version it says verily on the first day of the week that means the first day of the week is sunday so there is no need of any discussion or argument over this matter because the bible is very clear so the bible tells us remember the sabbath day and keep it holy we are to remember the sabbath day and keep it holy as a perpetual covenant between god and the children of israel forever that is exodus 31 verse 16 to 17 it is a sign between you and me says god remember the whole way the lord your god has led you these 40 years in the wilderness that he might humble you test you to know what was in your heart whether you will keep his commandments or not the book of deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 you just go at your own time and read the whole book is so interesting especially when you go to uh, verse 17 whereby it says be aware be careful that you may not forget the lord your god and say in your heart my power uh, the mighty of my hand have gotten me this wealth you shall remember the lord your god for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he saw to your fathers 
as it is this day. That is Deuteronomy 8 verse 17 to 18. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 also talks about uh, remembrance. As a young man, you need to remember the Lord your God. We have several young men in this house who cannot join the youth choir, who cannot join the youths when they are going for global youth, youth day or youth week of prayer. They are just there enjoying life. It is for a while. You will not be a youth forever. You are a youth now. Hallelujah. A time comes when you will grow old like me. <laughs> When Abraham entered the promised land of Canaan, he built an altar to remember, to commemorate the Lord's appearance to him and the renewal of the covenant and the, and, and the Lord made, that the Lord made with him. Genesis 12, verse 6 to 8. Remember all the covenant, cov, com, commandments of the Lord to do them, not to follow after your own heart uh, and your own eyes, which you are inclined to hold after. So you shall remember and do all my commandments and be holy to your God. Numbers 15, 39 to 40. So our greatest need as better living members is to remember where we have come from. To remember what the Lord has done unto our lives. To remember all the good things that God has made in our lives so that we may not worship these things, but that we may worship our God. Look at this. Um, when Isaac was born, Isaac was born to Abraham and Sarah. After a long struggle, it was not easy. Uh, for those who are struggling to have babies, they know the pain it takes uh, waiting upon the Lord to place them. And some of us, when we look at them, we may not understand what they are going through. We sometimes talk some things that are not pleasing and may God forgive us. It happened to Sarai and Abraham and it is God who closed the gump of Sarah. Then a day came and Isaac was born at their old age. It was not easy, but it was joyous. When Abraham looked at his son, he forgot about one thing. He forgot to kneel down and thank God for what he did to him. Uh, it's not good to mention this, uh, Dr. Richard, are you here? Uh, where is Dr. Uh, yeah, you are. Just come a little bit. Uh, yesterday, not even yesterday, but uh, Dr. Ari has been preparing me. Uh, telling me, Pastor, uh, we are expecting a baby as a family. But before uh, the baby just come here, Dr. Ari, I'm sorry for ambushing you. You didn't know about this. Um, Dr. Ari told me that, Pastor, before the child is born, I'll call you for a prayer. And he surely called me, Pastor, pray. We are now in the hospital. I prayed in the next how many minutes, Dr. Ari? Praise God. Amen. Pastor, I just sent you a text. Then he didn't reply. He just called me instantly. Then you prayed for almost one minute. Then after the prayer, I heard my ma uh, Yes. And the baby was then the baby came within a minute. Baby yes. Amen. Amen. So after that, uh, he, we talked and we prayed. And then the following day, he had told me earlier that if God will help us and the baby is delivered well without any complication, even with complication, pastor, come and pray in the hospital. So I went. I was so much humbled, by the way. These are testimonies that most of us assume 
you know you are pregnant uh, pregnant ladies how are you uh huh yeah so you know when you are pregnant you need to seek god in prayer hallelujah i was so humbled uh, humbled by dr sari so dr sari called me then uh, I went there, the baby was there, and then we prayed. And then he had told me earlier that, Pastor, this will be my desire, that when you pray after the delivery, and I know, Madam, you are watching there. Thank you so much. God bless you. We are praying for you. Uh, then he told me, Pastor, again, make sure that uh, uh, you come to the hospital and pray for the baby and pray for us. I did that. Then uh, not only that, you're also going to escort us when we'll be discharged from the hospital to the house and you'll do another prayer in the house. And I did that yesterday. Hallelujah. So uh, I said, oh my goodness, uh, God is with Dr. Ari. So God, uh, may God bless you, Dr. Ari, for your dream. And then he told me this one thing. What did you tell me about the son and your desire to the son? Yes, pastor came to our house. Mm. Really, thank you. He came with the elder Vincent. Mm. And uh, I had promised God before, mm. even before I gave, I gave birth to my, I, I got my firstborn, mm -hmm. that I would wish to, that a child would come from my law and would be a pastor mm. for that matter. Mm -hmm. So it's my wish. I know children will have their, will have their own choices in life, mm. but it's my wish that the child may gain, may gain an interest on heavenly mat matters. Mm -hmm and be a servant of God. Amen. Yes, it's Thank you so much. Wish. Thank you so much, Dr. I know you have uh, some other time in the afternoon for uh, testimonies. Uh, members, uh, don't worry about my long sermon. I'm doing this deliberately because today is a prayer and fasting a day. So I have to remind you, I've never done this before uh, because after this we are going to the Holy Communion and then in the afternoon, Elder James Ayeko, we are going to proceed with the Holy Communion, I mean with the testimonies uh, until five as we mix with the word of God. So, uh, Isaac was born and immediately Isaac was born, Abraham never knelt down to thank God for the baby Isaac. You know, some of us, when we read the Bible, we don't get the concept of what happened. What happened is that uh, Abraham forgot to thank God for the baby. Just read your Bible very well. There is no day from the time Isaac was born up to the time Isaac is sacrificed that Abraham knelt down and looked up to thank God for this gift. Because of that, God called him, Abraham, Abraham, give your only son, Isaac, as a burnt offering. Give him as a, an offering. You know, there are some things happening in our lives that we do not understand that they are part of the offering that we didn't give or the humility that we didn't give to our master. Hello? Hello? The boy, as they are going, is asking the father, Father, I see we have fire, good. The knife is here. The match, the, the fire is here. But where is the lamp? Mm -hmm. God will do what? Provide. And I, I mean, Abraham knows very well that he has provided. It is Isaac, okay? They were going. But our master is merciful. That even when we forget about him, he will always provide. Even when things are not working well, he will always provide. So he provided. So what I'm saying, my, my brothers and sisters, my fathers and my mothers, is that we need to remember the Lord. In everything that we are doing, let us remember what he has done unto us. Finally, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I have also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then, 
In the same way, verse 25, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And may God place us in Jesus' name. Finally, as we divide ourselves to go and wash our foot, John 13, uh, verse 3 to 5 says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, got up from supper and laid aside his garment and taking a towel, he guarded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he was guarded. So he came, verse 6 to 10, he came to Simon Peter. He said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I do to you, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him and said, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. I want to explain this last line. You may not be able to take the Holy Communion. You may not be able to take the cup or the bread. That is a symbol of the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. But then washing your feet is essential. If you are baptized, it's better for you to wash your feet and go home. Even with take, without taking the bread and the wine. But it will be better for you to pray that God may forgive all your sins. And then you take of this holy emblem. Because it will be part of you in Christ. I want to ask somebody who has not been baptized. You feel like you need also to take the Holy Communion someday. You are saying, Lord, forgive me and help me so that I become among the saints who will be marching to the heavenly kingdom. Nicodemus is told, unless you are baptized, you can never, unless you are born again, that is baptism, you can never get into the heavenly kingdom. Are you there you have not been baptized and you need this baptism, kindly march forward without looking at your neighbor so that we can pray together. Let us all stand as we sing, I've wandered away from home. And then I'm waiting for one person to march forward so that we can pray for you. Saying that I want to change my life. And as we do that, if you need some special prayer, you can also come and stand here. There is something that you are struggling with and you are saying, God help me in this. Come and stand here where the choir stands. You stand and face at the pulpit as we pray together. You need an answer for some prayer. Come here as we praise God. God has answered your prayer and you need to thank God. Come, stand here as we pray together. Thank you so much, madam, for coming. Just keep on coming. Those who want to be baptized someday, you can also join them. Just march up to the, the stairs here as we are going to pray together. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming.
who are standing here, just turn and face the pulpit. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, is there anybody who is giving his life for baptism? You want to be baptized? Let me see your hand. If you can see the hand, kindly inform me. There is one there. Just make a step forward. Thank you so much. God bless you. Just stand here. You face this side. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, come this side. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, thank you, my sister. I'm seeing somebody coming. We have two sisters coming. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we are going to, to pray now. Uh, we are going to pray. We have uh, just come, make another step. Good. Thank you so much. Uh huh. I don't want to close for anybody. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven souls for baptism. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you need to be baptized any time from next week, it will happen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we are going to pray for you who are standing here. You know what you are struggling with. You know what you want God to do for you, mention it in your heart as I pray. We are praying. I must stand our God. Lord, indeed, we thank you for what you are to us. We thank you for your word that you have given us this day. We have always gone far away from you. We have forgotten the most important things that you have done unto our lives. But this day, O oh Lord, we humble before thy presence, asking that you may forgive all our trespasses and write our names anew in the book of life. Even as we are preparing to partake of your holy emblems, O oh Lord, how we ask that you may cleanse us and count us worthy to partake it. In a special way, O oh Lord, your sons and daughters have anchored unto your voice. They have seen that in this life there is nothing important. So they have decided this day, O oh Lord, to accept you so that they may be baptized one of these days. May you forgive them, our master. And because of this bold step that they are made to ashamed the devil, may your name be glorified in their lives. May you baptize them in spirit or in fire so that this day, O oh Lord, their names may be written in the book of life. I also want to remember my brothers and my sisters who have come up front because of the burdens that they have in their hearts. You know each and every one of them, O oh Lord. You know what they are struggling with, our master. And this day, O oh Lord, you have come down to answer their prayers so that they can get a breakthrough of their struggles in this life. Let their coming here be a remembrance that in a day such as this, they came before your presence and you answered their prayers, our master. May they come one day again with a testimony and say that surely our master, we came with our petitions. You know what was we were struggling with and disturbing us and you answered our prayers. May your name be glorified. As they leave this place, oh Lord, if it is sickness, our master, I declare and ask that you may heal them in the name of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. If it is peace of mind, Lord, they are struggling May you give them peace that comes from above. If it is work that they are looking for, Lord, may you open for their opportunities. If it is the issue of families, oh Lord, may you come in for them. Let your will be done for every case in these lives that are standing before you. For this we pray, trusting and believing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Uh, for those who have come for baptism, kindly just get into that uh, room, the preparation room. Uh, thank you so much and uh, God bless you. Just remember that our program continues. Uh, for those who may not be able to stay uh, just because of health issues, you are free to go and take uh, your lunch and the children can be given food 
But those who can be able to fast, uh, you are welcome. We'll be here up to 5 p.m. Uh, so you are so much welcome, my elder. It is now your time. Thank you, Pastor, for the word. At this moment, I would want to ask again the church choir to come for an item, the very song that they sang as requested by Pastor. Then thereafter that, I'll be able to give direction how we are going to go through the next process ahead of us. Thank you. Church choir, welcome.
I will kindly ask that we pray. Our Heavenly Father, who liveth above, we thank you for the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came and died because of our sins. We thank you for the Son, for the teachings, the healings, and the miracles that he performed. And that set us free, Lord. This Sabbath, we want to humbly come to you with the word of thank you. And we kindly ask that you remember us in the second advent of your son, Jesus Christ. We want to thank our pastor. Your servant was just given the word as the word on remembrance, Lord. Lord, thank you for remembering us despite the sins that as humankind we did went through, we did go through, Lord. We want to ask you to be with us in the remaining programs that are ahead of us, Lord. We are inviting in our midst and the presence throughout the remaining part of the day because this is a day of prayer and fasting. Be with us now until the end of this program. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you, Kaya. You can sit, have your seat. And as the choir is taking their seats, I want to give you the direction on how we are going to have the second part of this program, which is ahead of us. And I will definitely not going to break the custom and the tradition that we've had as a church. And this is basically on 